The promotional pop-up is an awesome tool for introducing visitors to your website to some sort of lead magnet that you offer, but the mobile version of the pop-up is pretty lacking and it doesn't show the image. And in my case, my copy is referencing that image saying you can learn how to do something like this in my training. But on the mobile version, since the image doesn't show, the copy doesn't make any sense. So in my case, I need to show the image on the mobile version of my pop-up. And if you're in a similar boat, I'm gonna cover the CSS for how to do that in today's video. And there's an interesting discussion on the forum talking about the SEO implications of doing this. So we're gonna make sure that we cover those bases as well. We have a ton to get to in this video, so let's jump in. To enable the promotional pop-up on your site, go to website and then scroll down to website tools and then click promotional pop-up and you'll just wanna toggle it on. And the CSS that I'm covering in this video is going to cover the first layout. The CSS will be different if you're using a different layout, but obviously I can't go over all of them. So if you need help customizing another version of the pop-up, then you can absolutely hire me through my website and I'm happy to help. But in today's video, we're just gonna go over this first layout. So once you get it styled and set up how you want it to, if we go down to mobile, we can again see there's no image on mobile. Now, the hard thing about writing CSS for the promotional pop-up is it disappears once we leave this panel. So what we have to do is uh, I'm going to navigate to the custom CSS window by going to website and then website tools and then custom CSS. So now we're in the custom CSS panel. Um, and I'm going to right click on the page and click inspect and that'll bring up my Chrome inspect tools. And if we scroll down on this page, we want to go all the way down until we see the uh, section of the page where we have like the footer. And if I keep scrolling down, there's all the code that I'm using on my site. And then there's this element called the UE pop-up container node. So if I toggle this open and toggle that open, we, this is like our actual pop-up contents but you can see the second item here within this pop-up container node, uh, it has a display of none. So what I'm gonna do, uh, just to be able to even write CSS for this, um, I'm going to copy this SQS pop-up overlay class with uh, just hitting Control C while highlighting that to copy it. So I'm going to paste this class into my custom CSS window, and now we're gonna give it a display of block. And I needed an important tag because that display of none that's an inline style. Um, and you need an important tag in order to override an inline style. So it's also getting an opacity of zero. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna write opacity one. And I'm gonna give that an important tag as well. So now we have our pop-up showing. So now we can actually write CSS for it. You know, obviously I wouldn't wanna save this right now because then the pop-up would always show on every page and that's not what we want. This has no bearing on kind of what we do going forward. That's just so we can even see it. So now if I right click and inspect on this element, uh, so we can sort of just go through the structure here. So um, if I toggle this closed, let's kind of go back up to where we were before. So this is the pop-up container node. And inside of that, we then have the SQS pop-up overlay. Inside of that, we have another container, and this is just the SQS pop-up overlay content. And inside of that, we have the slide wrapper. Next, we have our slide container wrapper element. And then uh, inside of it, we have our slide. And inside of the slide, we're like finally making some progress right now. There's a ton of different kind of like wrapper elements. But now we have our uh, slide layer. And if I toggle that open, we finally have the content. If I toggle that open, now we have the close button. We have the gallery and then we have the content. And the reason that we don't see the image on mobile is because the gallery gets a display of none. So right now I can see all of the classes that are styling this element to give it a display of none. And we can also see it's in a media query. So these styles, this display of none for this gallery, it's applying from a screen size of one pixels all the way up to a maximum width of 600 pixels. So on screen sizes greater than 600 pixels, obviously this display will not be none. So we know that this is the targeting that we can use 
to show our gallery. So I'm going to copy all of the CSS from the CSS window, and I'm going to paste it in. Now when you copy it directly out of the inspect tools, like I got this style tag, which I don't need, and we also need to include curly brackets outside of our media query. So now if we give this a display of block, nothing has changed. It still has a display of none, and our styling is getting overwritten. So our styling is not specific enough to override Squarespace's styles, so we need an extra class in here. And one thing that I notice is the first class to be used is the SQS slide wrapper. So if we come up here, let's see if I can even find it. There were so many different container classes. SQS slide, SQS slide container, SQS slide wrapper, here we go. So this is the sort of like topmost element that it's using, but we, we still have more up here. So we could use this SQS pop-up overlay to make our targeting a little bit more specific. So I'm gonna add in that class there. And now our gallery should theoretically have a display of block. Yes, so because we added in another class, so we're using more classes than Squarespace is, so on the specificity, as I hover over the selector, you can see it's 060, whereas Squarespace's is 050. So we're using six classes and Squarespace is only using five. So that's why our CSS is overriding theirs. So now that we have it at a display of block, you know, this is a really good start. Now we need to adjust our copy. So I'm gonna just use this group copy class. So one thing that we wanna do is maintain all of these selectors. And so inside of it, you know, we wanna target the gallery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a curly bracket here, and then I'll add the closing cur curly bracket down here. So now uh, we're targeting the gallery within this slide container class. And so we can also now target the group copy element inside of that container as well. So we're sort of maintaining the specificity of all these classes, and we're now targeting the group copy, which is inside of all of these classes. And that way we keep our specificity super high because we're using you know, all of these classes in addition to this class to, to write our styling. So now for the group copy, for the width, I'm gonna do, let's do like 75% um, because, you know, I want my image to be pretty small here, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But for the margin left, I'm gonna do 25%, and that way it scoots it over to the left, and we can see our image kind of peeking through here. And so now we just need to change the width on the gallery. Let's do width 25%, and um, let's check out our gallery. Our width of 25% is not applying because it already has a width of 50%. So we're gonna to need to use an important tag to override their important tag. So I'm gonna go on the gallery, I'm gonna add an important tag to my 25%, and there we go. So now it squishes down to 25%. So now we're pretty much done, really. Um, our image is showing on the mobile view. If we go to the desktop view, because we have a media query that's only targeting uh, this CSS on mobile, it's not gonna affect the desktop view but now we get our image on mobile, which is great. So pretty much you just have to make sure that these numbers add up to 100%. So this is the width of the gallery, which is 25%. That means we need 75% to complete the 100. And then because the image is on the left and we need to move the content over to the right, we can add a margin left of 25% to the group copy. So that is equal to the width of the image. So there you go. So that equals 100%. One fun thing we could do is to make this a little bit easier to play with different adjustments. We could add a pop-up image width variable and we could say we want our image width to be 25%. And so now we have our width be the variable and the margin left be the variable. And then we can have this width here, we can set up a calculation. Um, and with less, which is the preprocessor that this custom CSS window uses, we need to add this to our calc um, and that just uh, escapes what we're about to write. So I'm gonna do 100% minus, and then write an at symbol, and then I'm gonna open up some squiggly brackets, 
and I'm gonna paste in that variable name, but we need to get rid of the at symbol um, because this is how you write a variable name in a calc function in less. So now we have 100% minus 25% equals our width of 75%. And the cool thing is we can now just change this variable here. So I can make this maybe like 30% and everything is just gonna you know, perfectly do the calculations. I don't have to be changing three things. I can just be changing one thing, which is kind of cool. So one thing that we do need to cover still is this conversation around will this impact SEO? And Paul is super awesome. Uh, he's really active in the forums and really knowledgeable. And he does mention that the mobile version of the pop-up has deliberately designed it this way, meaning the image not being shown, so that it respects Google's guidelines for pop-ups on mobile and does not obscure the content underneath. And this is really important because Google predominantly uses the mobile version of the content for indexing and ranking. If your pop-up does not respect Google's guidelines, your site is likely to be penalized in search rankings. And so what he's saying is Google has very stringent rules around how big your pop-up is and how much of the content it's going to be covering up. And if your pop-up doesn't abide by those guidelines, there's nothing specific mentioned, but if your pop-up is too big, Google is probably going to hurt your rankings. So it's really important that when we remove this code, you can see our pop-up gets slightly bigger. Um, but, you know, we're not talking about the pop-up, you know, covering half the page or anything like that. Like, it just gets slightly bigger. So in this case, I'm being really careful about how big my image is. You know, I don't want to go up to like 50% because now my pop-up is getting really big. And I think that, you know, might get into the territory where Google could penalize me. But if we're just getting slightly bigger, I'm not too worried about that. The other thing I can do is remove some of the margin below this title. So um, this H1 heading here has an ID of SQS slash page header. So I'm gonna copy that and I'll come down below the group copy and we target IDs in CSS with hashtag and for the margin bottom. So right now it has a margin bottom of 25 pixels. So I just have to do something less than that. So I'll go like 15 pixels and I do need an important tag it looks like. And there we go. So now we have a little bit less room between the heading and the description. And so now that enabled my whole pop-up to get a little bit smaller. And so now if I remove this, you know, it's barely getting bigger. I think I'm, you know, well within the guidelines for making sure that the pop-up isn't too big while still being able to show the picture on mobile. And real quick before we finish, make sure you delete that original pop-up CSS and now you'll be good to go. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for more Squarespace customization content like this in the future, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.